I once knew a lad who spent $500 on a YSL belt. A belt. He was a busboy. That's about five times as much as I paid for my iPhone, which was only four years old at purchase. But now I look at this, and I look at the phone I had beforehand, which was about $30 new, At least you can eat a belt. It's no great revelation that we live in a society that loves to consume. And by consume, I don't mean we're buying sausages and bitumen coke like there's no tomorrow. I mean crap we don't need. What gets me is, even all of that is on a scale. What I mean, dear reader, is no one actually needs a juicer. They might think they do, if they open up their cupboard one morning to find nothing but a can of pinto beans and dollar cheeseburgers, and suddenly think to themselves, I don't like my life. I need more juice. But they don't. Not really. If their home was invaded some day by a task-oriented maniac who at gunpoint made them, after drawing a bath, make some juice, and they didn't have a juicer, I like to think the sheer will to live would make pummeling some fruit pretty doable. It's risky either way. Everyone who owns a juicer either has a lot of fruit or no fruit. <coughs> but if you take a leap off the wagon of rationality into madness, you can find a juicer that's right for you. Because really, your juicer says a lot about you. You can spend $30 on this thing that looks like it takes the impurities out of spilt gasoline. Or you can spend $360 on this thing that won an award for design that is unpowered and comes with the added feature of not being dishwasher safe. This thing is the same brand as the first one, and this website reckons it retails at 800 bastard dollars. But we can only assume they all do the same thing. As with my Made in China Izumi and my Made in China iPhone, this would have been $500 new, this is $30 new, some do it better than others. This has got a better retina display. It is more functional. Is it 16 times better? Yeah. We'll add a third one in post, it'll look great. Just throwing phones all day. I can't eat seven or eight carrots. Maybe an expensive phone is easier to justify than a $500 belt. You owe it to yourself to watch bit-crushed, colour-fucked YouTube videos on a 1080p retina display. Think of all the work you could do, but won't. You owe it to yourself to eliminate the frustration of tapping on the Izumi like it's the bulletproof glass in the urban development lobby. But really, it's all just a status thing. People don't buy $500 juicers because they juice so much that paying more than 10 times the cost of a cheap one is totally worth it being 20% faster. It's because it's 100% shinier. But not crap shinier. Not like they put a sticky sheet of chrome on some plastic. Expensive shinier. Now this is a person who juices. Stand back. My juice is coming straight out. That's the power of the Joe Cross juicer. But vanity consumerism, where you really buy something because of its status value rather than because of its practical value, is deeper than the obvious examples. Yes, you can buy an EV, but people are really going to notice if it's a Tesla. Yes, you can have a nice handbag and people might like it, but they're not going to be impressed if it doesn't have the logo. But you can never go wrong with Chanel. At least in my opinion. But it's not just that. Did you know? Statistically, you're much more likely to be successful in your field if you go to a college, any college, and do well there. Much more successful than if you go to a very prestigious university and kind of suck. I've never met anybody who's proudly told me that they have a first from Plebville Poly, but I have met many, many thickos who will not stop talking about their time at Stanford or Cambridge or IUP, FNC, K12, Institute of L. I went to a very fancy university. So that means I'm smart. That's how it works. Also, mother and father are cousins. Consumer products, and I feel pretty comfortable calling higher education a product these days, 
has got its tentacles into people's sense of identity. You can't just go to college. You have to let people know which college it is you're going to. You have to buy the bumper sticker and wear the t-shirt. You can't just listen to music. You have to let people know that you're into music, unlike everyone else. And you can't do that with cheap earphones. Also, flares. You're a certain sort of man, a man who takes his face very seriously. Without a bespoke oxycarbon hyperrazor developed by an ancient order of hairless Spanish monks with both hairless skin and ergonomics in mind, that won't be the case. It doesn't matter if no one sees the razor that you use, you do. Also, you should tell people about it. Possibly on Twitter, here's a coupon. People will ask you about this razor all the time. They'll say, Hey up jockstrap, how did I get such a close shave? And if they don't, be sure to tell them about it, because it's fascinating. Don't you want people to know who you are and what you stand for? Honestly, I love it when people tell me about the shit that they've bought. A Range Rover. Mmm, that says a lot about you as a person. A new TV stand, you say? Don't just tell me about it. Stick some photos up on Instagram, I want to take a gander. Don't even do that. I see it now, it's a blog. A blog all about your new TV stand that has been manufactured a mere 100,000 times. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to put on it, in it? What are you not going to do with it? How are you going to utilize your TV stand? I must know. A blog isn't enough. I'm seeing now an anthology, no, a book of poetry. Steve, get me Penguin. Aha, you say. But aren't there others? None that even remotely approaches. Lonely? Too depressed to cook? Buy the branded TV dinners, not the generic slop. It'll make you feel better about yourself. Eating shit, but at least you're not poor. Hip tang! It's a choice. Or on the other end, couture. Let everyone know you're special by wearing something both impractical and ridiculous, without the swarm of flies that wearing a fruit bowl on your head might elicit. Maybe then, someone will finally love you. That's probably what this all really comes down to. There's a lot of money to be made from sad people, and there are a lot of sad people out there. Have you been outside? God, I miss my past life as a piece of driftwood in the Sagasso Sea in the 16th century. Things made a lot more sense then. I was a reindeer before that, somewhere up north. I don't know when. It's all right. Too many bloody reindeer, though. Weirdo fitness fads, like higher education, aren't consumable objects, but they're driven by consumerism. They're all about being seen to be using the product, or, in the case of your yin-yang coffee table, making the consumer feel better about themselves and feel like they're a certain sort of someone. I take fitness very seriously. I'm very much a modern action man. That's why I do all this bollocks in a room that has two walls that are just windows and one wall that is just a mirror. Admittedly, this would be laughable if I just did this in a t-shirt and shorts. That's why I need this skin-tight bodysuit with silver piping and a shiny logo right in the middle. Everyone knows cotton isn't breathable. People even do this with their kids. Little Condoleezza is still sticking crayons up her nose and that's fine, she's three. Fighting for a prestigious preschool spot isn't really going to benefit her. Her future is as good as sealed. She's going to be a marketing consultant. There's no two ways about it. The education isn't really tantalizing for the parents. It's the status. Little Velocipede is happy means nothing. Little Velocipede is doing his grade six in harpsichord next week and he speaks Thai, gets the prestige points. I used to think that the idea of manufacturing need was insidious. The idea that you don't really have to have a product that fills an actual need if you can convince a consumer, and eventually, if you're good, a society, that there is a need. It wasn't so long ago that the cosmetic industry existed as a sliver of what it is now selling sundries for people to occasionally wash the shit out of their hair. And now I find, not only is there shampoo and conditioner, 
there are a plethora of products. Skincare products, fantastical deodorizers, lip enhancers, forehead elongators. I've gone on the London Underground enough. I've traveled on enough public transport across the world where I can honestly say, you know, people are just gross. They just smell. It doesn't matter how much deodorant you put on, you smell and you look gross. People look gross. It doesn't matter how much makeup you put on, you look fucking gross. We all do. Look at my teeth. That's what you look like to me, everyone. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just, you know, get a grip. But it's not bogus needs that are manufactured anymore. Really, it doesn't seem like there's that much that's new. Cars, phones, people, houses. Instead of manufacturing needs, it seems to have gone to manufacturing an attitude of competition. Show the world you're a professional, or an individual, or at the very least, critically, not poor, by distinguishing yourself in the field of social battle, with a laptop case, a haircut, new teeth, bizarre, over-the-top facial surgery that is truly high status because only someone surrounded by people who are entirely subjugated would get it and go outside with it. A tease made. My God. Convincing people not only that they need to not look poor, but that they can look not poor by buying shit. It's almost beautiful. Just like you. I'm kidding. You're 100% beautiful. Not almost. You're there. To someone. <laughs>